welcome to the fine lecture series. On behalf of the Perinatology Research Branch of NICHD and the National Institutes of Health, my name is Lami Yo and I am one of the developers of FINE. In the prior lecture, we reviewed how FINE simplifies the marking process for the user. In this lecture, we will now discuss in detail how to actually mark the seven anatomical structures of the fetal heart within the stick volume for the FINE method. As a brief reminder, after a stick volume has been determined to be appropriate, the next step is to mark anatomical structures of the fetal heart using the anatomic box tool. And once marking is completed, this triggers intelligent navigation technology. Fine teaches the user the seven cardiac structures that need to be marked and also where the marking should occur through reference images. To repeat again, they are the aorta at the level of the stomach, aorta at the level of the four-chamber view, crux, right atrial wall, pulmonary valve, superior vena cava, and the transverse aortic arch. The anatomic box panel is on the right-hand side of the screen. This video shows the marking procedure. Please note that when we say marking, this means placing the cursor on the anatomical structure, which is the same as clicking on the structure. First, the aorta at the level of the stomach is marked. Next, the aorta at the four-chamber view, the crux, right atrial wall, pulmonary valve, superior vena cava, and the transverse aortic arch. An important point is that when anatomical structures are not marked appropriately, the FINE method may not be successful in generating fetal cardiac views. Now we want to review some general instructions before the marking process is started. We will review the adjustment of brightness, midtones, contrast, and color tint of the image, and scrolling through the planes with the fetal heart not in motion when deciding which planes to mark. The image quality displayed in stick loop depends on the quality of the initial stick volume obtained. If the volume has generally poor image quality in which structures are not very clear, this will also be the case for the image quality in stick loop. This is because the system automatically converts the stick volume into stick loop, a two dimensional cine loop that scrolls in a continuous fashion. To facilitate marking of all structures, we recommend adjusting these features in the stick loop image based on user preference, brightness, midtones, and contrast. The goal is to increase the contrast quality of the stick loop image so that the marking process is easier. Here, the brightness has been decreased to negative 7, the midtones increased to 1.36, and the contrast remains at 0. Brightness refers to the absolute value of colors, lightness, darkness. For the fetal heart, adjusting the brightness affects the appearance of the blood pool. In this example, the brightness is adjusted. First, it is increased. Notice that there are more speckles in the blood pool of the cardiac chambers. Then, as the brightness is decreased, the cardiac chambers become very dark. However, one issue is that if this is decreased too much, one can falsely create septal defects, such as here in the ventricular septum. Therefore, be careful with adjusting the brightness. 
contrast is the distinction between lighter and darker areas of an image and makes objects or details within an image more obvious. For the fetal heart, this will affect the fetal bones, such as the spine. Here are the fetal ribs and the spine. In this example, the contrast is increased. Notice that the light areas or white color of the bones become even more white. Obviously, this is extreme, so one should find a contrast that doesn't lead to this type of image. Midtones. All luminance or intensity of light values that are not dark or light are considered to be midtones. By adjusting the midtones, this darkens or lightens the medium neutral grays. We recommend that when first adjusting the stick loop image, always start with the midtones first by increasing the midtones. This means moving the slider to the right rather than moving the slider to the left. Here we are purposefully moving the slider all the way to the extreme right just for this example and then all the way to the extreme left, but obviously this does not need to occur. Here is another example. By increasing the midtones, the image, which is the four chamber view, has darkening of the medium neutral grays. The image overall appears more optimal. Now another adjustment that can be made to the stick loop image is to the color tint by clicking here. There are several color tint maps that are available in stick loop and are chosen based on user preference, sepia, gray, and ice. Here are examples of the same four chamber view, but in sepia, gray, and ice color tint. An important point is that we strongly recommend that one scroll through the planes with the fetal heart not in motion when deciding which plane to mark. Here is an example. The user is scrolling through the planes to determine which is the best plane to mark the aorta at the level of the four chamber view. Notice that the heart is not in motion as the user is scrolling. This is strongly recommended because all of the marking guidelines that will be reviewed shortly have been developed based on the fetal heart not in motion. Here is another example, but this time the user is scrolling to find the best plane to mark the pulmonary valve. Notice that the heart is not in motion as the user is scrolling. However, it is completely acceptable to momentarily pump the fetal heart to identify that this is the pulmonary valve. Next, the valve is marked. Now we will review in detail how to mark the seven anatomical structures of the fetal heart. The first structure to be marked is the cross section of the aorta at the level of the stomach. Spine will automatically show the plane at the level of the stomach. The cross section of the aorta will be visible. One should mark the aorta at this plane recommended by the system. However, if the stomach is not visualized, perform minor scrolling adjustments until the stomach is seen. One should mark the aorta when you begin to see the stomach. In other words, it is important to seek planes containing the stomach that are located more cranially closer to the fetal head. Avoid planes of the stomach located caudally towards the fetal legs. Also, when possible, the aorta should be marked when it is shown as a circular versus elliptical structure. Then, mark the center of the circular descending aorta.
Now occasionally you may need to scroll to the other end of the stick volume to locate the stomach. And if so, the fetus may be breech. Go ahead and mark the cross section of the aorta as usual, and then an intelligent alert, known as a breech alert, will now appear. A breech alert is a type of intelligent alert, and this will be discussed in detail in another lecture. The breech alert states that the fetus appears to be in a breech presentation. It also states that the volume will be reoriented as if the fetus is in a vertex presentation. The alert asks if this is acceptable, and the user must click yes or no. If the user clicks yes, then the fetus will be automatically converted by fine to a vertex presentation so that the cardiac apex points to the left side of the screen as shown here. Then proceed with the marking process as usual. However, if the user clicks no, then the stick volume data set and its orientation will remain the same. The user should proceed with the marking process as usual. Why does FINE convert a true breach presentation to a vertex presentation? There are two reasons. First, this will lead to easier marking of anatomical structures since each structure is expected to be in the same location on the screen. The second reason is that fetal anatomy and structures are more easily recognizable by users. Here is an example. Notice that one has to scroll to the other end of the stick volume to locate the stomach, and this is because the fetus is breech. Once the aorta is marked, a breech alert will appear, and after clicking yes, Fine automatically converts the breech to a vertex presentation, and the marking process will continue with the next structure to be marked being the aorta at the level of the four-chamber view. Now before we describe how to mark the next three structures, please note this important point. The same four-chamber view plane is used to mark three anatomical structures. The aorta at the level of the four-chamber view, the crux, and the right atrial wall. Now let's review how to mark the second structure, which is the aorta at the level of the four-chamber view. To find this plane, one must locate the four-chamber view plane where the crux will be marked. Why? Because this will be the same plane for marking the descending aorta. Once you identify this four-chamber view plane, mark the center of the cross-section of the descending aorta as shown in the image. Crux of the four-chamber view. To mark the crux, please identify the ideal plane of the four-chamber view. Remember that this is the same four-chamber view plane that was just used to mark the aorta. In order to click on the crux, the atrioventricular valves, mitral and tricuspid, should be closed in systole. Then, mark the crux between the atrioventricular valve insertions. What is an ideal plane of the four-chamber view? A true cross-section of the thorax with proper alignment of the four-chamber view in the axial plane. One should avoid planes that appear to have an azimuth issue or tilted planes if possible. Azimuth is recognized by visualizing a foreshortened atria or ventricle in the four-chamber view as shown here. Here is an example of trying to find the ideal plane of the four-chamber view. We always recommend starting from the five-chamber view and then scrolling caudally, in other words, moving the scroll button to the right. Normally, the atrioventricular valves are offset, in which the tricuspid valve annulus inserts slightly more apically on the ventricular septum than the mitral valve. The crux should be marked midway on a vertical axis between the insertions of the tricuspid and mitral valves onto the ventricular septum, as shown by the red circle. In this fetal heart example, 
the red arrow shows where the crux would be marked. As stated in a prior lecture, Fine recognizes the cardiac phase and therefore will automatically close the atrioventricular valves so that the user can mark the crux of the four-chamber view. However, occasionally the valves will be open, in diastole, or appear unsatisfactory. One example of when this occurs is after Fine converts a true breach to a vertex presentation. So how can the atrioventricular valves be closed? This is done by manually adjusting the cardiac phase to close the valves by adjusting this gray slider button. Moreover, the cardiac phase should be adjusted so that the annulus of the valves is positioned lower towards the base of the heart or atria as shown correctly in the right image. But remember, most of the time, Fine will automatically close the atrioventricular valves to mark the crux so that you don't have to manually do this. On the left panel, this box allows you to manually adjust the cardiac phase and therefore close the atrioventricular valves. This is done by moving the gray slider button to the right or left. Remember that the cardiac phase should be manually adjusted so that the annulus of the valves is positioned lower towards the base of the heart or atria as shown correctly in the right image. Now once the atrioventricular valves are closed, then scroll to the ideal four-chamber view plane as described previously. It is noteworthy that if the atrioventricular valves have been closed manually, the pulmonary valve may also need to be closed manually. This video shows that the atrioventricular valves are open. The first step is to manually close the valves by adjusting the gray slider button and bringing the annulus lower towards the atria. Next, we scroll to the ideal four-chamber view plane and then mark the aorta, crux, and the right atrial wall. Notice that the pulmonary valve is open and will need to be closed manually. The fourth structure to be marked is the right atrial wall in the four-chamber view. Remember that this is the same four-chamber view plane that was used to mark the aorta as well as the crux. After marking the crux, a pre-configured and angled green line will automatically appear that is locked at the crux where you marked. The green line can be rotated as you choose around this locked point. There are two parts of this green line. The long portion of the line which is placed over the ventricular septum and the length of this line cannot be changed. The short portion of the line is used to mark the right atrial wall. This line can be made longer or shorter to accomplish this. In this video, the crux is marked and a pre-configured angled green line will automatically appear. This part of the line can be made shorter or longer to click on the right atrial wall. The crux is locked into place and the longer portion of the line should be placed within the ventricular septum and the short portion of the line is adjusted so that the right atrial wall can be clipped. Let's review this again. After marking the crux, a pre-configured and angled green line will automatically appear that is locked at the crux. Place the long portion of the line inside the ventricular septum. The short line is already angled towards the right atrial wall for marking. Go ahead and mark the edge of the right atrial wall, not within the atrial chamber. For this example, the red arrow shows that one should mark the edge of the right atrial wall and not within the atrial chamber. It should be noted that for some fetal hearts, when one tries marking the right atrial wall, this will actually occur very close to the atrial septum or sometimes even at the left atrial wall. So what should one do?
this is still acceptable and marking of such areas should still be performed. The key is to place the long line inside the ventricular septum and then click on the wall, not inside the atrial chambers. The fifth structure to be marked is the pulmonary valve. One should scroll as anteriorly as possible to mark the pulmonary valve. The artery and valve should still be visible. Do not scroll too much because then the pulmonary artery and valve will start to disappear. Of course, the valve should be closed and appear as a line. Then mark the middle of the valve. In this example, Fine has automatically presented the plane to mark the pulmonary valve. Although this plane is correct, the goal is to still scroll interiorly to mark the pulmonary valve as shown here. However, if one scrolls too much, the pulmonary artery and valve will disappear. So, scroll the opposite way to find the correct plane. Now, what happens if the pulmonary valve is open? This only happens occasionally, for example, if the atrioventricular valves have been manually closed by the user. So how can the pulmonary valve be closed? This is done by manually adjusting the cardiac phase to close the valve by adjusting this gray slider button. Moreover, the cardiac phase should be adjusted so that the pulmonary valve is positioned lower in the artery towards the spine, as shown correctly in the right image. But remember, most of the time, Fine will automatically close the pulmonary valve for marking so that you do not have to do this. On the left panel, this box allows you to manually adjust the cardiac phase and therefore close the pulmonary valve. This is done by moving the gray slider button to the right or left. Remember that the cardiac phase should be manually adjusted so that the pulmonary valve is positioned lower in the artery towards the fetal spine as shown correctly in the right image. Once the pulmonary valve is closed, scroll anteriorly as possible to mark the pulmonary valve. The artery and valve should still be visible. This video shows that the pulmonary valve is open. The first step is to manually close the valve by adjusting the gray slider button and bringing the valve lower in the artery towards the spine. Next, we scroll anteriorly to mark the valve and then the superior vena cava in the same plane as the pulmonary valve. The sixth structure to be marked is the cross section of the superior vena cava. This occurs in the same plane where the pulmonary valve was just marked. The user should mark the center of the cross section of the superior vena cava. The last structure to be marked is the transverse aortic arch, which we refer to as the dolphin because it has a similar appearance. Notice the dorsal fin. This is where the transverse aortic arch will be marked or clicked by the user. It is important that the transverse aortic arch is marked at the most anterior portion of the arch curve as shown by the red circle. When looking at the transverse aortic arch, it is also important to mark in the middle of each side and also of each end. So to summarize, mark the most anterior portion of the arch curve and mark in the middle. Sometimes if there's difficulty in judging where to mark, it is best to mark more inferiorly on the transverse aortic arch towards the dolphin tail.
In this example, Find has automatically presented the plane to mark the transverse aortic arch. Although this plane is correct, the goal is to mark the most anterior portion of the arch curve or the dorsal fin of the dolphin as shown here, then mark in the middle of the dolphin. We would like to spend a few moments teaching how to recognize a few pitfalls when marking the transverse aortic arch. The first pitfall is to not confuse the superior vena cava for the dolphin head. Here are three images starting caudally and then moving cranially. In the caudal image, the cross section of the superior vena cava is clearly seen. As we move caudally, the transverse aortic arch in red is also clearly seen and it is marked correctly. However, in a more cranial image, the dolphin takes a different shape because the superior vena cava seems connected to the transverse aortic arch. Therefore, the marking will occur here instead, but this is completely incorrect and will therefore affect the appropriate generation of cardiac planes. So it is important to manually scroll back and forth through the planes to distinguish the true anatomy of the transverse aortic arch from the superior vena cava. So why in a more cranial image of the upper mediastinum does the superior vena cava appear to join the transverse aortic arch? Here is the pulmonary artery, transverse aortic arch, superior vena cava, and trachea. The left brachiocephalic vein, shown here in blue, drains into the superior vena cava. Notice that the left brachiocephalic vein is slightly cranial and anterior to the transverse aortic arch in red. The black circle shows the correct marking of the actual transverse aortic arch. However, if one incorrectly thinks that this is the transverse aortic arch, which includes the left brachiocephalic vein and superior vena cava, the marking, as shown by the white circle, will be completely incorrect. In this video clip, Notice that the left brachiocephalic vein is horizontal and drains into the superior vena cava. When color Doppler ultrasound is performed, the pulmonary artery and transverse aortic arch have a blue Doppler signal, while the left brachiocephalic vein has a red signal draining towards the superior vena cava. Therefore, here is the image we showed previously. The true transverse aortic arch is shown in red, the left brachiocephalic vein in gray, and the superior vena cava in blue. However, one can incorrectly believe that all of these structures are the transverse aortic arch because they seem connected to each other, and therefore the marking will be wrong. So again, it is important to manually scroll back and forth through the planes to distinguish the true anatomy of the transverse aortic arch from the superior vena cava and left brachiocephalic vein so that the marking is correct. This video shows the pulmonary valve being marked and then the superior vena cava. Notice that we are manually scrolling back and forth through the planes to distinguish the true anatomy of the transverse aortic arch from the superior vena cava and left brachiocephalic vein so that marking is correct as shown here. Now that we have reviewed in detail how to mark the seven anatomical structures of the fetal heart using anatomic box, we will show a demonstration. As the marking process is shown, remember that FINE simplifies the marking process because it automatically places the cursor near or at the location to be marked. And please notice this in the video for the right atrial wall, pulmonary valve, superior vena cava, and the transverse aortic arch. First, the aorta at the level of the stomach is marked.
Next, the aorta at the level of the four chamber view. Next, the crux is marked. The green line automatically appears and the right atrial wall is then marked. Next, the pulmonary valve, which can be identified by pumping the heart. So the middle of the pulmonary valve is clicked or marked. Next is the superior vena cava. And then the transverse aortic arch. And we are clicking in the most anterior portion and in the middle. Within several seconds, all nine cardiac diagnostic planes have been automatically generated by FINE. An important point is that anatomical structures of the fetal heart may not be successfully marked due to the following reasons. Suboptimal quality or inappropriate stick volume, lack of operator familiarity with fetal anatomy, and the presence of congenital heart disease. In conclusion, seven structures of the fetal heart are marked using anatomic box. We recommend adjusting the brightness, midtones, and contrast in the stick loop image to facilitate marking. We also recommend that one scroll through the planes with the fetal heart not in motion when deciding which plane to mark. The atrioventricular valve should be closed in systole to mark the crux. The pulmonary valve should be closed in diastole to mark the valve. Be aware of pitfalls when marking the transverse aortic arch, for example, the left brachiocephalic vein. And when anatomical structures are not marked appropriately, the fine method may not be successful in generating fetal cardiac views. Thank you for your attention.